sermon text comes from the 24th chapter of Luke, verses 44 through 53. Please listen for this reading of the Lord's Word. And Jesus said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law from, from Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, This is what is written. Christ will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day. And a change of heart and life for the forgiveness of sins must be preached in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. Look, I'm sending you what the Father has promised. But you are to stay in the city until you have been furnished with heavenly power. They led them out as far as Bethany, where he lifted his hands and he blessed them. And as he blessed them, he left them and was taken up to heaven. And they worshipped him, and they returned to Jerusalem overwhelmed with joy. And they were continuously in the temple, praising God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be God. Would you bow? Father, we give you thanks for this, your holy word. We give you thanks for the many ways that you use it in our lives. Lord, as I come this day, pray that you would forgive me of anything that would stand in the way of my service to you and this your people. I pray the message that is given will be your message. And the words that are spoken will be your words. And Lord, as we gather as your people in your name, we pray that the way that you would use this message to change our hearts and our lives would be according to your will. And we will give you all the praise and honor and glory for the amazing and wonderful things that you will do. Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. One of the things I tell you is that if you're going to read a sermon text and there's something about it that could cause somebody to have a lot of questions and you're not going to address it in the sermon, then you need to address it before you get into your sermon, okay? So we're going to talk about kind of the elephant in the room in this, in this reading, or at least it would be for most normal folks, and that is dissension. We're celebrating Mother's Day today, but we're also talking about Ascension Sunday. The day where, if you notice, the, the reading from Acts, the reading from here in Luke, talks about the Ascension. How in the world does that work? Anybody got an answer? Yeah. See, that's, that's the issue, you know, that, that we always have to deal with in our faith. There's still some things that we can't explain, and I'm grateful for that. If we could explain it, we wouldn't need our faith, and we wouldn't need God. So you got Jesus who appears to them in a fleshly body and he ascends into heaven. You know, well, the first time they see him, they're not sure who he is. You think about those who he traveled with on the road to Emmaus. They didn't recognize him. So obviously this body looks a little different. I'm going to tell you, it's, you know, when you go to the 15th chapter of Corinthians, Paul tries to explain it a little bit. You read in 1 Thessalonians, he talks about it a little bit there. It's a glorified body. It's a little different than the one we got now. Praise God, we're going to get one of those one day. I don't know what they look like exactly. Hopefully mine will be better looking than the one I got now. You can laugh. It's okay. <laughs> but it's a glorified body. Something will be different. If you go back and look in the, in the Gospel of John, you see that on, on the resurrection day, on the first Easter, Jesus appears to the disciples and it said they're locked securely in the upper room for fear of their lives. They're afraid of the Jews. The Jews have just crucified Jesus. They don't want to go suffer through the same fate. So they've locked themselves in a room, and Jesus appears in their midst. And then just as he appears, he disappears. You know, he doesn't have the problems that we suffer in this body. The thing about trying to explain items like this of faith is that we are limited to what we understand, and we're limited to the vocabulary we have. And we can only use the words that we've got. So I'm happy to stand here and tell you that I can't explain all of this. I have no idea how this exactly works. If we're going to put it in today's scientific terms, we might say something like, well, he came from a different dimension, that spiritual realm. He entered into this dimension. And then he returned to that dimension. Now, however you want to explain it, it doesn't really matter. The point is... He ascended to heaven. And we said a while ago, we believe in the resurrection of the body. 
Did you catch that part? Yeah, we said we believe in that in our affirmation of faith. So the thing about faith is you're going to believe in some things that you can't explain and nobody else can either. And like I said, for me personally, I'm thankful for that. I want to believe in a God that can do things I can't explain. I saw one yesterday firsthand, <laughs> right in front of the hood of our car. So I, I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful for healing that makes no sense at all. I'm, I'm grateful for the way that God moves and the things that he does that we can't explain. But what I want to really focus on today, now that we've got that dealt with, I want to focus on where, where Jesus is talking to them, and he says, then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. Now, what I don't want you to hear is that the preacher said, if you don't have time to pray about it, if you don't have time to do the research, if you don't have time to gather up enough people, if you don't have time to read six commentaries, then you shouldn't be reading scripture. It's not one of the same, okay? There's never a bad time to encounter God's word. The Bible says that God's word never returns void. Even if you're distracted and you read it, it's going to make a difference in your life. Even if you just read it on a billboard, it's going to change something. It's going to make a difference somewhere in your life. But what I am going to tell you is that we do need Jesus to open the scriptures for ourselves and our lives as well. I mean, here are the disciples. And, and Jesus had to stop and explain to them all the things that had happened. These were good Jewish people who grew up in the synagogue. They knew these scriptures. It doesn't say that Jesus had to read it to them. They already knew what the scriptures said. But what they didn't understand was its fulfillment and all that it meant. And they walked with him every day for three years. As I mentioned, the two on the road to Emmaus a while ago. You know, they were walking along. They walked seven miles with him and didn't recognize him. They recognized him when they sat down at the table that night and he broke the bread. That's when they knew who he was. You see? And it says that he opened their minds and explained the scriptures to them. Here's the point of this very brief sermon. <coughs> Anytime we sit down to read scripture, we should, we should first, I'm not, like I said, I'm not saying don't read it if you don't have time to do everything you think of. That's not the point. It's not about dotting eyes and crossing T's. But we should first seek God in prayer. And we should ask Jesus through that same Holy Spirit he's talking about here. Okay? To open our minds so that we might understand all God has in store for us through the scripture. If you remember last week's sermon text from the 14th chapter of John, this is what Jesus tells the disciples. He said, I've spoken these things to you while I'm with you. The companion or the counselor, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you everything I told you. We need the Spirit at work in our lives when we're trying to understand Scripture. And the only way that's going to happen is if we stop and quiet our minds and get rid of everything else and focus on that and ask for Every Sunday when I'm working on this sermon, I'm trying to figure out what in the world I'm supposed to be talking about. There's a dozen different sermon texts in this one reading today. And I want to be sure I'm trying to go the same direction that God wants me to go. And so I pray, Lord, give me your word. Open my heart. Open my mind. Explain this to me so that I have something to say that means something to these people who will come to church on Sunday. And so that's important to us, I believe. I think sometimes we take for granted the scriptures. And I think we think, well, you know, there they are. Been here 2,000 years. Had all these commentaries written about it. I'll just go read one of them and that's it. And you know what? God is still speaking to people who come to him through sincerity of their heart and ask him to open the scriptures for them. I'm not saying you're going to get some revelation nobody's ever thought of. I'm not talking about you going out and starting a cult or who knows what. I'm talking about your relationship with God and his word and the way that it will affect your lives if you sit down sincerely and ask him to open your mind to understand what the scriptures have to say to you. 
And if you'll do that every time you pray, if you'll do that every time you sit down with the scriptures, God will honor the sincerity of your heart and your desire to really know him more. Open your heart through the power of Christ to receive his word for you today. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit,